Google Search Console Tips and Tricks for 2025 Sitemaps In this video session, I'm going to share with you best practices when submitting a sitemap. In fact, sitemaps in Google Search Console is one area that you want to get right to see the right results or else Google be an efficient search engine may end up seeing the parts of your website that you probably didn't want to Google to index. So, sitemap basically is a map of your website as in web pages. Yeah. If you operate a small business and a small website let's say you've got 20 different pages and if your internal linking structure is done correctly then you probably don't need to submit a sitemap but if you're using content management systems and your website is growing then sitemaps become very critical depending on the content management system you may find plugins or applications that automatically generate sitemaps for you. Or you can simply search Google for online sitemap generators, read through the process and let the tool to generate the sitemap. Basically sitemaps are, they come in different forms. One is XML sitemap. You can basically have a text file as a sitemap. But the common one is the XML sitemap. Now, the best insight that I can share with you is this. If you're using plugins or apps, or if your content management system automat automatically generates a sitemap, then you don't really want to submit one main sitemap to Search Console. Instead, ask yourself, what is unique on your website? And what do you want Google to access on your website? Because it's unique, original content. And you want Google to show in Google search results. Meaning, identify the parts of your website that has original, unique content. Mainly web pages, product URLs, blog posts. They should be submitted to Search Console. But collection URLs, tags or categories, all this stuff, you probably don't want to submit a parent sitemap that includes those. Okay, that's very important. Why is that? Because when you submit a sitemap, you're telling Google, you know what, Google? Here's the important pages on my website. So in a typical WordPress or Shopify example, Collection URLs, they're just placeholder URLs. As in, <laughs> there is nothing unique on these category URLs. Usually that's the case. So, now, yeah. in this example, the sitemap reports tells us, you know what? Google has seen the sitemap. Also, you can generate image sitemaps, video sitemaps. Do you have to? Not really. If you're using plugins to generate your sitemap, they usually generate the sitemap correctly. Let's take a look at this example. Actually, let's go and look. I'll show you what that looks like. Because then you see. Um, okay, let's look at this. Okay, let's look at the source code. Press Control U on your keyboard. As we can see, using a plugin to generate the sitemap, it tells us the location of the page. It's in the URL. There's a different URL, but that URL has an image. So that is already included in there. That means you probably don't need to submit image sitemaps. But if you're hosting your own videos, for example, 
then you definitely want to submit video sitemaps. So now if we get into understand the importance of sitemaps, right? The report tells us, you know what, could Google request and see your sitemap? Status is success. In this example, yes. If there was an error, then you want to double check that. Here we can press on the three dots, see page indexing according to this sitemap. As we can see. That's all to do with indexing. So we can look at particular sitemap indexing. Okay. Now let's take a look at this here. Here we can open the sitemap and see what it is. Or we can actually remove the sitemap. When do you want to remove the sitemap? If you've made major updates on your website, Perhaps you've changed your theme or updated your web host or changed web host or domain or something. Something that's majorly changed on your website is the perfect time for you to tell Google, you know what, Google, there has been a major change on my website. I've just removed the sitemap. And then you can resubmit the sitemap. Okay, so that option is there for you. So, Google Search Console tips and tricks for 2025. Most people, as in most website owners, don't pay attention to sitemaps. And thus, they end up wasting time looking at unimportant reports. For example, page indexing. Google shows you all known pages. If you've submitted the correct sitemap, then you can look at all submitted pages and you'll see a drastic change in terms of problems. But if I didn't submit the sitemap, then Google will show me all known pages and look at the problem difference. That's why you want to make sure that you get your sitemaps submitted correctly. Let me wrap it up. Ask yourself, what is unique on your website? Blog posts, web pages, Product URLs is usually the core parts of a website. So therefore, submit those sitemaps only instead of one parent one. I thank you for learning with Renka. In the upcoming tutorials, I'm going to share with you different tips and insights that you definitely want to explore if you want to see better results in 2025 and beyond. I thank you for learning with Rankia and I'll talk with you in the next video session.